Okay, so you've got a Rico machine that you've bought used, and you have the need to run PostScript on it. And these machines are workhorses. They last forever. There's also other brands that are the same machine, just a different badge on the front. Uh, so this may apply to those as well. So Rico did the work. Uh, and acquired proper licensing for Adobe PostScript uh, so that back when these machines were bought new you would buy the additional SD card for however many hundred dollars that had the uh, Adobe PostScript on it uh, for the machine and it would then install into the machine the SD card would live in the machine uh, but when you're buying these machines used, uh, taken out of a business environment, uh, sometimes they've been stripped down, sometimes they never had those features added. And uh, anyway, you have the need to do PostScript, so you can go on different uh, websites and find the uh, SD cards for sale. Sometimes they're uh, some aftermarket garbage, or sometimes it's the legit. Uh, SD card but it's been used before and when you put those used before cards in the machine it's going to give you a error message that looks like this where it gives you this warning cannot install the software software has already been installed on another machine so the community for these machines is very tight lipped they want to have you buy a new machine and I get that I'm not condoning any type of piracy uh, or, or circumventing a license process or, or anything like that but I am saying that you can legitimately get one of these workhorse machines that a previous owner barely scratched the surface on the life cycle of the machine as far as its usage it still has a lot of life left in it and if PostScript is what you need to be able to run in the machine so that it fits what you're doing with it um, you know to keep a machine that still has a value of upwards of two grand out of a landfill over one feature um, because I wasn't myself wasn't even able to find the SD card for my machine new uh, at all. So that's why I resorted to other sites to, to find used cards or I didn't know if I was buying used or no, it didn't specify, but uh, I was trying to find legit cards uh, and I actually ended up with a legit card just it had been used before. So I put it in the machine and there's a panel you remove over by the, the network card uh, to be able to put the SD card in it's hidden under a plate and I got the message here so the way that I was able to cure that and have fully working PostScript on the machine everything runs beautifully so that I've saved this machine from going to a landfill because it's got a massive amount of life left in it uh, this is uh, mock-up of the folder structure in the card. This is not the actual SD card in my machine. There's going to be some additional files that are not shown on the screen here. Uh, but I'm just showing you, you would stick the SD card in your computer. I'm using Windows. Uh, not sure if Mac will work or not. But I put the SD card in the machine. And so there's this, on the SD card, there's this gwinit.d folder. Go into it. And there's these two Z-O-F-F-Y-M files, uh, a CNF file and an LIC file. Those two files I deleted off the SD card. Then I went to the other folder for module and the Z-O-F-F-Y-M whatever. Those two files in that folder I deleted those two off of the SD card. So after deleting those four files from the SD card, uh, plug the SD card back in the machine and of course know what you're doing. You don't do anything with the SD card while the machine has any power. You power it all the way off, cut the master power off, 
make sure the machine is completely off before inserting or removing any SD cards. And uh, furthermore, once the PostScript is installed, I think you actually have to go through the menu system and disable PostScript before you turn off the machine if you were to remove the SD card for any reason. Uh, also, there's other processes of merging SD cards and their data. Uh, myself, my machine came with everything I needed. All I needed to do was add the PostScript. Neither SD card slot was occupied. So, you know, mileage may vary. You may have a little different scenario. But to take a previously used SD card, the only one I could find to purchase, uh, to put in this machine that I bought secondhand, uh, remove those four ZOFFYM files, put the SD card back in the machine, power the machine on, waited a minute while it did its thing, there were no prompts on the screen about installing or anything, uh, then was able to take and print uh, PostScript that yielded the sets of dots for the image, and uh, that looks like this. So if you catch yourself wondering why the need to print dots like that, well then you probably happened upon this video by accident and uh, you know you have n no need to print from a Macintosh to one of these uh, high-end machines, uh, nor have you ever done anything in the screen print industry. So uh, you know, not going to go into any kind of education on that. Uh, but if you need PostScript on one of these machines and they're workhorses, uh, that's what I had to go through to get it done and, uh, you know, tremendously increase the value of the machine for myself, for my purposes. So I hope this video helped. If you like it, subscribe. Um, if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down and see y'all on the next one.